Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. The press is full of stories that the Arctic is melting and it's making the world burn up. But in the real world, Arctic sea ice extent is the highest in 18 years. Ice coverage in the Arctic is nearly identical to the same date in 1991. And in this video, I'm going to show you that there's probably more Arctic sea ice now than there was 100 years ago during January 1922. But I'm going to start this story with a massive solar storm which occurred during May of 1921. The storm disrupted electrical systems all over the world and was associated with a massive heat wave. On May 23, 1921, most of the eastern half of the United States was over 90 degrees. Telegraph wires around the world were shut down. The New York Times reported, Solar explosion bombards Earth. The New York Central Railroad signal system was shut down by this storm. Train service in New York had to stop because the signals weren't working. The Aurora Borealis was seen as far south as the Mexico border and shut telegraph communications between San Francisco and Chicago. Two weeks later, one of the deadliest floods in U.S. history occurred along the Arkansas River, killing thousands of people in Pueblo, Colorado. The record heat continued into July and extended across Europe where glaciers were very rapidly melting. Before data tampering by NOAA, 1921 was the second hottest year on record in the United States after 1934. By September of 1921, there was a record heat wave and drought which covered most of the earth. Millions of people were starving in Europe, Russia, and Asia. The New York Herald reported, The great heat wave which has spread over the world during the present summer has no parallel in history. There have been hot waves, there have been famines, there have been pestilences at various times and in many places, but none so blighting and terrible as this. Lake Morat in Switzerland dried up. This is what the lake looks like now. The climate there has improved quite a bit over the past century. The worldwide heat wave continued into October. During October 1921, London had six days around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The Graphic Magazine in London reported it as a sizzling October and blamed it on sunspots. They said, in the Northern Hemisphere, this abnormal weather is universal. In Eastern Russia, it has caused a colossal tragedy. 1921 was a very hot year around the world and particularly in the Northern Hemisphere. The following year, in 1922, the U.S. Weather Bureau reported on the Arctic. They said there was a radical change in climatic conditions and hitherto unheard of high temperatures in that part of the Earth's surface. Many old landmarks are so changed as to be unrecognizable. Where formerly great masses of ice were found, they are now often moraines, accumulations of earth and stones. At many points where glaciers formerly extended far into the sea, they have entirely disappeared. The change in temperature has also brought about great change in the flora and fauna of the Arctic. And the key line for this video is here. Last winter, the ocean did not freeze over even on the north coast of Spitsbergen. This map shows Arctic sea ice extent during the winter of 1921-1922 around Spitsbergen. You can see from the black line that there was no ice around Spitsbergen that winter. But there's lots of ice around Spitsbergen now. So we know there's more ice now than there was in 1922 in the eastern Arctic. 100 years ago, during January 1922, explorer Stephenson reported that the ice between the North Pole and Alaska was young, thin, rotten, moving ice. But this year, the ice along the northern sea route is very thick and many ships have gotten stuck in it, endangering the supply chain to parts of Russia. There may be more ice now in the central Arctic than there was a century ago. When Stephenson reported young, thin, rotten moving ice between the North Pole and Alaska and Siberia. And in the western Arctic around Alaska, ice coverage is very similar now to what it was in January 1922. We know for sure that there's more Arctic ice in the eastern Arctic now than there was a hundred years ago. We also know that the ice in the central Arctic was thin, rotten ice a hundred years ago. And we know that ice in the western Arctic is about the same as it was a hundred years ago. The case can be made that there's more ice now than there was a century ago. Whether or not that's true, evidence does not support the idea that there was a lot more ice a hundred years ago than there is now. Let's look at some more information about what the climate was like in 1922. May of 1921 had a huge solar storm and a record heat wave. And the heat wave continued into 1922. 
Paris has hottest May day in past 116 years. 90 degrees in Alps, glaciers melting. September 23, 1922, world growing warmer. European glaciers are everywhere receding. The ice fringes of both poles are retreating. Even during the short space of time that the Antarctic has been visited by man, the ice has retreated some 40 miles. Glacier National Park was melting so fast that experts predicted all the ice would be gone before 1950. But the glaciers are still there, which tells us that glacial melt has slowed quite a bit over the past century. Had the rate of melting continued from 100 years ago, Glacier National Park would be ice-free now. We know that 100 years ago the earth was very hot and dry. There was a worldwide drought and millions of people were starving. Glaciers were melting everywhere. So let's take a look at how NASA reports the record heat wave of 1921-1922. They show that time as being some of the coldest years on record. NASA has rewritten the Earth's history, and they're banking on the fact that nobody's around who remembers what the weather was like a hundred years ago. This graph is meaningless garbage and does not represent the Earth's history, but unfortunately, policymakers use it as their primary source of information. Toto has been calling out this malfeasance by NASA for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.